Good morning and welcome to Rochester in Focus. I'm Lynette Adams. Coming up on the show today, we're finishing out Mental Health Awareness Month, which ended Friday. It's not enough, though, to just talk about the issues. We want to make sure you're armed with resources. So today we're talking with the executive director of NAMI Rochester. She's armed with information about how to know the difference between having a bad day and the beginnings of a mental health condition. The director of crisis services for the Goodwill of Rochester uh, is also here to talk about services available in a crisis. And lastly, Rochester's Juneteenth celebration is marking a milestone. The commissioner of the Greater Rochester Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, Commission is here to talk about what you can expect during this year's celebration. Well, we just ended Mental Health Awareness Month, but we didn't want to end the conversation about mental health without talking about the resources out there to help individuals and families coping with a mental health issue. NAMI is one of the largest grassroots mental health organizations dedicated to helping people with mental illness build better lives. Donna Lee Estes is the executive director of NAMI Rochester. Welcome to Rochester in Focus. Thank you, thanks so much, Lynette. So I know that one of the things that happens during the month of May, Mental Health Awareness Month, is fundraising um, for mental health organizations like NAMI. Can people still give, can people still uh, donate to your organization? Absolutely, they can donate. They can send checks to NAMI Rochester. Our address now is 344 North Goodman Street, Rochester, New York, 14607. And they can also certainly do donate on our website, namirock.org. Awesome. So let's talk about NAMI. For people who don't know what your organization is all about, just give us a little description. Well, NAMI Rochester and NAMI in particular, uh, NAMI helps to support, educate, advocate for individuals and family members who are dealing with a mental illness. So we're there and want to make sure that people know that they're not alone and anything that they're going through, we're there to help and support them. So this is not just for the person who may have a mental health diagnosis, but also for the family oh, members correct. and loved ones, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. We support anyone, loved ones, um, friends that are going through, you know, issues with people that they love and, you know, respect mm -hmm. that are having a mental health struggle. One of the things that is challenging for families is getting that diagnosis yes. and knowing where to turn, where to go, who to talk to. Right. What would your advice be for someone who is getting that diagnosis? What's the first thing a family should consider? Well, definitely, you know, turning to a professional for a professional diagnosis. And sometimes that's a little bit difficult because there aren't enough professionals in the area. Um, we try to help them find a professional, uh, but we, there are defi different, definitely different um, areas in which they can turn, you know, so, sp strong, I can't mm -hmm. speak this morning, strong behavioral health, um, Rochester General has providers, and then there are per personal providers and independent providers throughout the community. And we try to help them decipher where those providers are. But let's talk about the emotional support, because I think that um, when you get the diagnosis, it's got to be challenging to figure out where do we go from here mm -hmm. and how do I cope with this if it's a loved one, for example. Correct. And, and that's where the benefit of NAMI comes in, because our programs, which are all free, there's no charge for any of our programs. We provide the support groups and the education programs for those individuals. So all of the individuals who are our facilitators or educators for our programs are all people that have had lived experience. They absolutely understand what it's like going through those experiences that mm -hmm. the individuals are going through. So we have those support groups and we have the education programs. And people will walk in, especially the support groups, thinking, not knowing what to expect right. and thinking that they're alone and their feelings that they're having are, are definitely feelings that no one else is having. Mm -hmm. And when they do attend, they realize other people are experiencing the same things. And sharing those experiencing experiences and the camaraderie um, helps them a great deal because it's something that therapy can't offer. Mm -hmm. 
first of all, letting you know you're not alone. You're, you're not, not alone. The only one going through this. Absolutely. You know, the statistic that NAMI uses, one in five adults experience Correct. a mental health condition. So when we talk about a mental health condition, what exactly are we talking about? We're talking about mental health mental health issues. So we're talking about depression, anxiety, okay. could be bipolar, could be bipolar disorder, could be schizophrenia. It could be any of the anxiety, any of the mental health diagnosis. Um, we're talking about anything that can refer to a, a mental illness. You know, you may feel like something is going on with me, but I'm not quite sure. Is there a way to know if this is a bad day? I'm just having a series maybe of bad days or if this could be the beginning of something more that I need to talk to my doctor about. Right, and sometimes going to your primary care physician is the best place to start. Mm -hmm. And anything that's prolonged, if you're having a prolonged experience with those feelings, the feelings of anxiety, the feelings of, you know, I'm having a really low day. If, you're, if it's going on beyond a month, um, sometimes you'll see people that are having feelings of depression or anxiety after the death of a loved one. Well, if, if those feelings are going on for more than a month, mm -hmm. you know, it's time to really, you know, take charge and see someone about that. Start with your primary care physician and, and start to see what they have to say. And if they feel they, they know you and if they've known you a long time, maybe they would be able to refer you. Think about the fact that maybe you have depression. Mm -hmm. And maybe you only need a short term um, pr prescription for depression right, or right. anxiety. Let me just quickly ask, we probably have about 30 seconds to go, but how are we doing in the area of the stigmas attached to mental health disorders? I mean, is that a big reason I, that people don't seek help? Yes. Stigma is still a very big reason people don't s seek help. And that's one of the things that we try to really help with at NAMI. Um, stigma is one of the major reasons people don't seek help. They don't want to be associated with any type of mental illness. So we encourage people to talk about it. That's what we do through our mm -hmm. fundraising efforts and our support groups. All right, you will find that you're not alone. You're not alone. And we just want to let you know that NAMI has a number of resources. If you have questions, you can reach out to NAMI at 423 one five nine three or go directly to the website at info at nami rochester.org and you can get some of your questions answered donna thank you so much you're welcome for joining thank us you. this morning thank you for having me if you or a family member is experiencing a crisis help is just a phone call away when rochester focus continues we'll introduce you to a local organization that offers help every day all day we'll be right back Welcome back to Rochester in Focus. When you think of places that can help you in a crisis, mental health or otherwise, you may not think of Goodwill of the Finger Lakes, but it is one of several programs in our area that has a number of different programs ready to help, particularly crisis programs. Deborah Turner is the Director of Crisis and Referral Services. Welcome to Rochester in Focus. Thank you for having me. I did not know the goodwill of the Finger Lakes has so many programs. Talk about what you do and the crisis programs that you offer. Yes, so I operate the 211 Lifeline program. So 211's main goal is to connect people to available resources. We house a comprehensive database of thousands of different resources listed within our community. So that could be food pantry, shelters, um, clothing voucher programs, all the way to mental health services mm -hmm. like drop-in, mobile crisis. Um, but we also operate 988. And so 988 is the three digit dialing access number for what was referred to as the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. So you may remember the 1-800-273-TALK, mm -hmm. um, the FCC, implemented a three-digit dialing access number because who remembers an 800 right. number these days? Right. <laughs> so 988, when would I dial that number? You can dial it anytime. Um, it's a 24-7 confidential hotline. We also offer chat and text services as well. It's a mm. nationwide program, so anyone can call it. 
Um, pretty much our organization handles about nine counties, so our goal is to provide the crisis hotline services within our community. So that way when you're reaching out to us, you're able to access a lot of those resources that we talked about within our database. Okay, so I'm having a crisis. I don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. I don't know who to talk to. I would call 988? Absolutely. And yep. what kind of help could I expect on the other end of the phone? We start with compassion and empathy. Um, you know, it's, it's really important that when we hire and train our staff that they always have that baseline level of just empathy and connection. You know, we hire people that have a background or they have lived experience, so they know what it's like to go through mm -hmm. a crisis, whether that's they're in crisis or someone they love has been in crisis. Um, but what we would do is, you know, we might ask a few simple questions, like trying to assess, you know, their, their level of risk, you know, if they're having thoughts of suicide. Um, that does not always warrant a call to 911, for example, that our goal would really be, let's talk about what's happening now, what prompted your call, and then, um, you know, let's talk about your thoughts of suicide. Let's talk about how to help you come up with a plan that you're comfortable with, because the absolute last thing we ever want to do is involve 911 services, that mm -hmm. we have a really good success rate. Um, under 2% of our calls, chats, or texts actually result in needing to engage 911 services for rescue. Under 2%? Under 2%, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Talk about the nine um, county areas. What are you seeing in terms of volume? Are um, you really busy? It, we're busy, yeah. We're definitely busy. You know, I think what's um, always tough when we talk about the work we do is we just don't know what we're going to get when we get mm. a call. It could be someone struggling, you know, I can't pay rent, and that's leading to some thoughts of suicide. It's leading to that elevated state of crisis where they're just really stressed and they don't know what to do. So then are we um, talking about people who uh, are already experiencing a mental health disorder, um, or are we talking about people who maybe are on the brink of, say, depression? Um, as uh, Dom talked about earlier. I mean, yeah. what, who are we talking about exactly? It's a spectrum. You mm -hmm. know, we get a lot of calls from people that suspect something is off. You know, mm -hmm. they're not feeling right. Um, they're more anxious. They're more depressed. They just, they're just not sure what to do. All the way to someone being in that elevated state of, I have the pills, I'm ready to take them, but I need help. I need to be talked down from this. Um, so there's a wide spectrum and array of people that contact us. You know, we get a lot of calls from family or friends. You know, they suspect something is up with the person that they care about and they just don't know what to do about it. You know, mm. they need to know what are the signs, you know, what are the options if, you know, I want to have a conversation with them or what services could I offer them to, to help them get the help. You know, I asked Donna earlier about how do I know if I'm just having a series of bad days mm -hmm. or if there is indeed uh, a mental health condition developing. When do I know that I need a crisis center or that I need some sort of intervention? Or do I know that? <laughs> I guess that's your job to I determine think... <laughs> that on the other end of the phone. It's always it's always tough to, to figure that out. You know, I think a clinician would say, you know, over a certain period of time, if you're experiencing symptoms, then yeah, you, you do want to get that checked out and get some help. Um, you know, personally, I have struggled with postpartum mm -hmm. depression. And so for me, it was... I had a lot of pieces, so like I had issues with memory, I had issues with, you know, just feeling really down or feeling a lot of shame or feeling anxious out of, out of nowhere. Um, and it took me a while to kind of recognize those red flags and to be like, okay, I need to, I need to talk to someone about this. And so I think it really depends, you know, sometimes it's a family member saying, hey, you know, you haven't quite been yourself lately, are you okay? I think when in doubt, our services are open to anyone who either suspects something might be off um, to being in that full-blown state of, I, I am ready to end my life and I need some help to not to. Um, so we really encourage anyone on that spectrum because a part of suicide prevention is getting help before it even gets to that point. And so that's what we encourage is when in doubt, give us a call, ask us questions. You're welcome to stay anonymous. You do not have to share any information that you are not comfortable sharing with us. Um, but we will do our absolute best to connect you to a resource, whether that's 
hey, let's do a mobile crisis intake, or hey, you know, if you would feel more comfortable, here's a mental health drop-in center that you can go to and ask some of these questions. That way, the caller feels empowered with mm -hmm. that journey to get decision. help. Yeah, it's great that these services are out there. We want to let you know uh, how to reach these services. If you are in a crisis and you're contemplating suicide, you can speak with someone immediately by dialing 988. If you need assistance with resources like food or housing, you can reach Lifeline by dialing 211. Affinity Place offers respite for individuals experiencing a psychiatric crisis, and that number is also on the screen. It's 563-7470. Deborah, thank you so much for coming and, and introducing us to Goodwill uh, uh, of the Finger Lakes. A lot of programs that yeah. can help you or your family. And Rochester in Focus will be right back. Rochester's Juneteenth celebration is coming up later this month. Next, uh, next month, I, well, next couple of weeks, I should say. And this year, it is celebrating 60 years. This would be the 60th anniversary in Rochester. And Rochester has been celebrating this for many, many years. And joining us this morning to talk all about it is the commissioner of the Martin Luther King Jr. Commission, which has organized this celebration each year, um, Sherry Hawkins. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. And I want to just talk about this year's celebration because last year it was awesome. And I know you have one year under your belt in terms of a citywide celebration. This is a new year, but this is actually 60 years that the commission has been celebrating June 10th, Juneteenth rather. Yes, um, the very first Juneteenth was actually in 1964, and that was led by a gentleman by the name of Mr. Trim was his name, but it was also emceed by our late Queen Mother, Dr. Iris Bannister. Wow. And that was held at the National Strong Museum of Play, and they had lots of food, lots of activities, and the commission has actually been doing it for the past 10 years. Wow. the Greater Rochester Martin Luther King Commission. But we've been celebrating this for 60 years in Rochester. So long before the nation, other cities were celebrating Juneteenth. We were celebrating it here in Rochester. What's the significance of 60 years of celebrating Juneteenth? Well, 60 years is significant. And actually our theme this year is from 1964 to 2024. Mm -hmm. And it is, you know, 60 years in the fight for justice in Rochester. So it's very significant because there was a lot, it, it, it signifies the, the, the riot in 1964 yes. and actually the uprising. So we will be doing a kickoff event to actually be talking about the three days of the uprise here right in Rochester, New York. So, you know, people have heard the term Juneteenth, but what is it really all about? What is Juneteenth? Well, the Juneteenth is an opportunity for us to celebrate the Emancipation Proclamation of the Freedom of Slavery, which happened um, back was declared in Texas in, in 1865. And so it's an opportunity for us to come together together to celebrate those who have paved the way. Um, we've had some um, awesome folks we know here, Harriet Tubman, mm -hmm, right. um, the Underground Railroad, and a lot of folks who have paved the way. So we want to give honor um, to those folks and, and also the, the people that continue to fight for social justice, equality, and, and freedom. So what can we expect at this year's celebration? At this year's celebration, we can expect a lot of festivities. We have a national artist, Seven Streeter, who is a songwriter. She has wrote for Chris Brown and lots of others. Um, we can also expect lots of vendors, lots of different kinds of foods. Um, we have a parade which kicks off at 10 a.m. at the corner of Chestnut and East Broad Street, and we're going to 
take that parade all the way to the National Strong Museum of Play. And then from there at 11 a.m., we are going to celebrate in an elder circle, some of our elders um, here in the community, uh, one being the Reverend Douglas Smith, also Loretta Scott, just people who have paved mm -hmm. the way along the way. After that, we will begin our festivities over at the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Park. Mm -hmm. And there we will have food, entertainment, local artists, national artists. Um, we have our VIP uh, section for those of, our, of those who sponsored this year. And we have lots of sponsors and very grateful to our sponsors, just to name a few, the city of Rochester, um, the county of Monroe, ESNL, the strong, just lots, and mm -hmm. we're grateful. We can't name everyone, but right. if you want more information, you can go to www.rochesterjuneteenth.com. All right, perfect. And we just want to let you know that Rochester's Juneteenth celebration this year is Saturday, June 15th. As you just heard, it kicks off at MLK Park downtown. Then the Elder Circle happens at the Strong National Museum of Play at 11. And then at noon, the festival opens and it is free. on. Free. It is absolutely free and it's a family event. So that's June 15th, two weeks from today. And thank you so much for being here on Rochester and Focus. Looking forward to the festival this year. We'll be right back. A big thank you to all of our guests today. And if you would like to be a guest on Rochester in Focus, we'd love to hear from you. You can contact News 10 NBC at 232-1010 or just send us an email at riff, R-I-F, at WHEC.com. And that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, have a great week.